So we've been working with scientific notation for a while, but today we were actually computing with scientific notation. So for example, we had two numbers in scientific notation and we were adding them together. What we learned was when we have scientific notation, numbers in scientific notation with the exact same power of 10, it's actually a very easy problem to solve because what you do is you can take the two coefficients of the scientific notation and you can add those two together and since they're both being multiplied by 10 to the 19th power once I add these together I can multiply that answer times 10 to the 19th power and that'll get me my answer in scientific notation so if you notice here 5.2 plus 1.4 that gets me 6.6 and then it's all being multiplied by 10 to the 19th power. So, if I was adding up these two numbers, my answer would be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 19th power. What we also found today, though, was when you're multiplying two numbers in scientific notation that have different powers of 10, things are a little bit harder. So, what we want to do is change one of these numbers so that they do have the same power of 10. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got 2.3 times 10 to the 6th power. I've got 1.6 times 10 to the 9th power. I'm going to take the one with the bigger power. And I'm going to change this so that it has the same power of 10 as this one. So I'm going to keep the 1.6. But instead of 10 to the 9th power, I'm going to break it up. I want it to be 10 to the 6th power, and I know 10 to the 3rd power times 10 to the 6th power would get me 10 to the 9th power because my product of powers rule tells me if I'm multiplying powers at the same base, I add the exponents. 3 plus 6 is 9. And I specifically pick 3 and 6 because 1, they add up to 9, but also because I want that last one to be a six, so it matches up to this one, all right? Because when I combine these together, 1.6 times 10 to the third power, that simply means move the decimal over three places. That just becomes 1,600. And I'll drop down my 10 to the sixth power. So what I've basically done is changed my original number into 1600 times 10 to the 6th power and if you notice now these two numbers have the exact same power of 10 and now I can actually do the easy computation with it alright so I'm gonna rewrite the addition problem now here's the first number plus I'm gonna drop this guy down here 2.3 times 10 to the 6th power now adding this is pretty easy because I take my two coefficients and I'll add them together. And since both numbers are being multiplied by 10 to the 6th power, I can take this number and multiply it by 10 to the 6th power. Now when I add this up, 1600 plus 2.3, that's 1602.3, and that's still times 10 to the 6th power. And I'm almost done, but it's not in scientific notation. In order for it to be in scientific notation, I'd have to move that decimal over three places to that spot right there. I'd have to mo move it over and make it 1.6023. But the rule is, since I made this coefficient smaller by three decimal places, I need to make the power of 10 bigger by three decimal places to compensate for it. So this is actually the answer to my original addition problem in scientific notation. So the key really is to make sure that the power of tens match up because then you can just add the coefficients. All right, so I'll give you one more. This time we'll do subtraction. And the example we did in our notes today was 5.97 times 10 to the 24th power minus 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd power. Again, notice your coefficients on your powers of 10, not the same, or your exponents are your powers of 10, 
not the same. So we need to change it so they are. And I always like to take the bigger power of 10 and change it. Although you could use the smaller one if you want to, but I find that kids get a little um, confused by that one because we have to work with negative exponents. So I always like to use the bigger one. I need to make this into 10 to the 22nd power. So I'm gonna keep the coefficient 5.97 and I'm gonna break up 10 to the 24th power. I need it to be 10 to the 22nd power and I know 10 to the second times 10 to the 22nd gets me 10 to the 24th because 2 plus 22 equals 24. All right, and that's the one I want, so they'll match up. All right, so let's simplify this a little bit. I know 5.97 times 10 to the second power means I move the decimal over two spots to make this just 597. And we still got times 10 to the 22nd power. And now I've got a number that has the same power of 10 as the other one. So now I can actually do the subtraction problem here. I can do this minus this. All right. So to subtract these, I just take the coefficients and subtract them. So the 597 minus the 7.35. And because both of these numbers are being multiplied by 10 to the 22nd power, I can take this answer and multiply it by 10 to the 22nd power. And I don't even need a calculator for this. 597 minus 7.35. 597 minus 7 is 590 minus 0.35 more, that's going to get me 589.65. And then it's still times 10 to the 22nd power. I'm almost done, but again, it's not in scientific notation. I need to move that decimal over two spots and make this 5.8965. But since I made this smaller by two decimal places, I need to make the power of 10 bigger by two decimal places. So that is my final answer in scientific notation. All right, so notice the mathematics behind this isn't that difficult, but there's a lot of little steps. And if you just try to keep in mind that your whole goal is to make the powers of 10 the same, so then you can just do the basic computation on it, that's your goal, and then you can solve the problem.